senses into memory maestros. Get all your senses involved, feel it. And can Aubrey overcome his lack of recall for lyrics in time for the end of the show? Probably the memory failure that causes us the most problems is the things we have to do in the future, such as remembering to buy a birthday card for a partner. In fact, our online survey shows that 10% of women, and I'm afraid to say 23% of men, have done this at some time. This is known as prospective memory. Now, Dr. Paul Penn is a member of a research team that's come up with a novel way to assess prospective memory. They've made a computer plan of a bungalow where the occupants are moving to larger premises. In order to move successfully, they've got to complete a number of prospective memory tasks. Things you need to remember in the future. They have to mark a glass as fragile, close the kitchen door to keep the cat in, and open the front door to let the builders in at 12.05, 10 past 12, and quarter past 12. So, Paul, the crunch question, how have the volunteers done? Well, they've done very well, but I think what's probably surprised them is how difficult this task is. Uh, you might envisage that just performing three activities within a 15-minute period was very easy, and everyone would score maximum points. But actually, due to the fact that there are minimal cues in the environment to remind them, and uh, that you know the tasks themselves are actually fairly mundane. It's actually fairly easy to not remember to do these things, um, partly because it, you're being distracted by the removal task. So it's not surprising we forget appointments and anniversaries in the distant future if we don't note them down. The virtual room gives a measure of how reliable our volunteers are at remembering things in the future and whether or not they need to be prompted. Very few of us can get by without any prompts, but it's useful to know what triggers you respond to, whether internal or external. You can test this for yourself in the next chapter of the Mystery at Memory Manor, and this test is intentionally quite complicated. We'll take you back to the crime scene to look round the original room where the painting was stolen from. Your job is to count up in your head the number of paintings that are left. When we get to the end, we'll see if you've got it right. There are also several alarms dotted around the room which may need to be reset. They should be on green, but if you see a red one, mark R on your paper to reset it. And finally, when you get to the end of the test, you need to write down C to say you've completed the task. You'll know when you've got to the end when the timer runs out. Now, it's up to you to remember this, so we won't be prompting you as you go along. Ready? Start now, and don't forget to count those pictures. How many paintings did you count? Well, you should have got 16. In actual fact, three paintings were stolen in the robbery, as well as the Titian. Another two paintings, each worth about £10,000, were spirited away. Neither of them has ever been found. But that little task was just to distract you. The real test was whether you remembered to reset the alarms. There was only one red alarm, so you should have marked one R on your paper. Seeing the alarm provided you with a visual trigger to remind you to reset it. If you did forget, it may have been because you were distracted by trying to count the paintings. And being distracted is a common reason why we forget to do things we mean to do in everyday life. And for the final section of the challenge, you should have marked a C on your notepad to complete the test. This was the hardest part of the task because it relied purely on your ability to remember things unprompted. So, if you counted all 16 pictures and have one R and the letter C in front of you, you can give yourself a tick for prospective memory. But regardless of whether you got it right or not, it does no harm to leave yourself prompts as long as they're appropriate. Put reminder notes in places you look every day rather than obscure parts of the house. Don't leave a message on the cooker if you never use it. Meanwhile, hidden away in Memory Manor's orangery, there's a speed dating session with a difference.
These 18 to 30 year olds are about to meet for the first time. They'll be hooked up to heart rate monitors as they help Dr. Alison Lenton find out does desire sharpen our memory or does beauty blind us? I think I'm quite funny and bubbly. Very determined. Outgoing. I have an interesting personality. How many personal details will they remember from a three minute date? Talkative. Forgetful. Rude and inconsiderate. Okay, everybody, off you go. Enthusiastic, you know, bubbly. <laughs> I work in the bakery, so you know what I'm saying. I'm serious. I'm highly demanding and I'm also a bit prissy. Okay, time's up. Ladies, if you could stand up and move one chair to the left, please. <laughs> very determined, I'd say, and very organised. So, Alison, what are we trying to find out here? Well, we know that um, if people pay attention to something, they are more likely to remember it. Are we saying, therefore, that the more we fancy someone, the more we are likely to remember about them? That's one hypothesis, and another thought would be that actually attraction could be distracting. And that's what Alison's been trying to test with her research. In this experiment, the speed daters will rate their partners after each meeting, according to whether they find each other attractive. I liked him. He was my favourite so far, I think. Yeah, I'd definitely like to see you again. I wouldn't date that guy, unfortunately, but um, he's very nice. So, after meeting everyone, how much can our speed daters remember? And will they recall more or less about the people they fancied? Try to remember all of the five facts that you learned about each one of your dates. Some of them I just have no idea about anything. I think maybe <laughs> we just weren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> we found something actually quite interesting. For those individuals on a date with someone who was rather attractive, he tended to remember not so much about that person. It seemed, in fact, that a lot of the information just flew out the window. But it was more than just distraction. Our speed daters only forgot unflattering information about the people they fancied, proving that love really does make us blind.